I'm Sandra Lea. I help people find peace with themselves, peace with food, and ultimately peace with those around them. I am the founder of the Food Addiction Recovery Program and the proud author of Never Enough, Three Pillars of Food Addiction Recovery. So I remember it was the summer between grade four and five, and it was a warm summer day. And it was one of the days where kids want to be outside and they want to be playing and they want to be with their friends, but that's not an option for me. I have to take my mom to the doctor because I'm her health advocate, I'm her translator, and we have been searching up until this point for her to get better. We're searching because she's living with bipolar disorder, she's living with obesity and food addiction, and she wants to be better. And I'm desperate for her to be better because I don't want to be her caregiver anymore. And so we sit down at the doctor's office and at that time in history, scare tactics were a big thing. And it was always made clear to us that it was my mom's fault. It was her choice to eat in that way. It was her choice to live with obesity. So the finger blame was always pointed at her. And so as a little girl, I didn't understand that. I didn't know what scare tactics were. And when he said, either you change or you'll be dead in two months, I actually believed him. I was terrified in that moment. And then he signals to me to translate this. And I got to figure out a way to put this in words so that I cannot scare her, but she needs to hear it. And I'm stuck between these two people. And I translate it. And I watch her sink into her chair and what it does to her. And we leave that appointment and it doesn't work. It only pushes her further into her depression and further into needing food for comfort. And so that really sparked this incredibly codependent relationship with my mother and myself. And we reversed roles at a very young age. And in a way I welcomed that because it eased the neglect that I was experiencing because in my mother's eyes, my worth the fact that I was this special, beautiful little girl was never reflected back to me. But now I had a job. I had a job to do. And that job was to make her better. My, my childhood home was filled with, with chaos and violence and uncertainty. And in many ways, the only thing available to me to comfort me through those dark times was food and I did turn to it and it was available. And that was one thing that my mother could give freely and she would. And over time, that source of comfort became an addiction. It was no longer that I was looking for the comfort, it was I needed the comfort. And then slowly that comfort started turning on me in so many ways. It turned on me and, and, and led me to live a life with obesity. It turned on me and it was starting to affect every area of my life. It affected my marriage and my career and my finances. Every single area of my life was spiraling out of control. And suddenly that comfort became the destruction of my life. The title of my book really speaks to where I was in my life when I hit rock bottom. And it was that feeling of never enough. I was never gonna be able to give enough, do enough, be enough. I was never gonna be thin enough, pretty enough, educated enough. And all those never enoughs drove me to look for solace. And I find solace in food but then eventually the food could never be enough. I couldn't get enough of it to numb the pain, to feel the comfort, to be distracted. The never enough drove me deeper and deeper into my addiction. So I have been a spiritual seeker my entire life and I originally recovered from food addiction in 12-step rooms. And I found those rooms at a time in my life when I could no longer trust my thinking. I couldn't trust my thinking when it came to my food, when it came to my relationships, and I needed to go somewhere where I could follow a path, where I could be filled with a room of people who loved me as I was. And in many ways, the 12 Steps rooms raised me. They, they took over where my parents were un, unable or unavailable to to raise me and show me a way to live a life. And so I will forever be grateful to 12-step rooms. I'm no longer 
a member of a 12-step program, but I've continued my journey of recovery in being a spiritual seeker. So I take any spiritual work that I do, no matter what they're talking about, I apply those principles to food addiction. And from there, I was able to create my three pillars of recovery. I never thought I was gonna help food addicts. Even though I had been in recovery myself for many, many years, and I was at this transition point in my career, leaving the corporate world and starting a heart-centered business. And I had a good friend, a soul sister say, oh, I guess you're gonna help food addicts. And I was like, no, no way can I, I can't help food addicts. How, what am I getting, how can I possibly help them? I know what they want. They want somebody who's on the cover of a Shape magazine and that's, that's just not me. But she gave me a gift that day. She planted a seed. And she gave me the courage to put my toe on the path. I, I just leaned in a little bit just to test the waters. And the universe answered with a resounding yes. The partnerships came with the doctors and I started creating programs and they were filling in and filling up and, and people were getting better. And I knew I was on the right path. I got my first opportunity to work with one of Canada's top obesity doctors to run a program for food addiction in his clinics and I was beyond excited. This was my first shot. And at the time I was a single mom um, and I was very tight on time, but here was my one shot. And it was such a gift because I would deliver the materials in a room full of people and I began to understand which messages would hit home, which messages were amiss, what people what felt comfortable with, what allowed people to open up and be vulnerable with, and I would go home. And I would refine my message and refine my message. And then over time, my program was in four clinics in Southern Ontario. So now I was saying the same things every week, four times. And I remember thinking, my God, this is such a grind. But I knew I was being prepared for something. I just didn't know what it was. And after four years of running my program week after week in clinics now across Canada, I was able to refine those three pillars and create this book knowing, because I had the real world experience, knowing that it landed for people, that people were changing, that results were being made. And so began this, uh, the work that I do. And so at the base, the foundation, without this foundation, I truly don't believe that the other pillars are available to people. But at that foundation is an unconditional acceptance of where you are today. Not when you lose the weight, not when you get the education, not when you have the house or the partner, but where you are today. And can you forgive yourself for everything that got you here today if you're, if you're not happy with it? And so then the three pillars, I call it a three-legged stool. And so if you neglect one of the legs, it's gonna be very hard to stay standing. And the first pillar is eliminating our trigger foods. Simply put, that's foods that you obsess about. Once you start, it's very hard to have a reasonable portion and will often lead to an overeating episode. I cannot tell you what your trigger foods are. I can give you a hint that generally they are ultra processed foods that contain refined sugar and refined flour. Um, but it's really up for you to decide what your trigger foods are and you can look at your history with them. The next pillar is to develop and surround yourself with a support network. You are who you surround yourself with. And so who is going to be there to cheer you on who are going to be there for you when you fall down, who understand the nuances of living with food addiction. And the third pillar is spirituality and mindfulness. What we know about addictive eating is that it's mindless eating. And so one of the remedies is mindfulness. Eating is a sacred act. How can we get quiet and still and be present with our food and commune with our food, engage all of our senses? And what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve peace and neutrality with food. So no longer using food to alter our states. We're not looking to food as pain relief, boredom relief, love, and rather we're looking for food to nourish our bodies, honor our bodies, what it was naturally intended for. For so many years, my mother was told to will her way out of it, to try harder. Doesn't she care that she has four kids to raise? 
And for me, writing this program is really writing this program for people like my mom. It is my chance to stand back and realize that I'm breaking the cycle of addiction, that my daughter will not be raised the way that I was raised, and that I want my daughter to have a life where she puts her health and happiness first, that she loves the body that she's in. And the only way that I can do that is by modeling it, because she doesn't listen to a word I say, but she's watching me and she's studying me, and I don't want her to have to undo any of it. My why for creating the three pillars is to help people where the docs have said, look, these, these patients, they're beyond help. I feel hopeless. I don't know what's gonna work for them. Those are the people that I open up my heart to, my arms to, they're the ones that are welcome in my program. They are people who feel misunderstood. They feel like the finger of blame has been pointed at them. They're the ones that I wanna help because I know even without the pillars, if I can be in the same room, either virtually or in person, and they can feel my unconditional acceptance and my unconditional love. And when they understand there's nothing that they have done to, with food or to their bodies that I haven't done, and maybe even worse, and that they're good, they're fine, there's actually nothing wrong with them. That once that heavy burden has been lifted, then they can begin the three pillars. What makes me the most proud is that my clients were willing to be contributors to my book, Never Enough. I know I have picked the right path, and I know it's more about them than me. It's actually all them. I'm just the person who's come in at the right moment to say the right thing that has ignited their ability that was always inside of them. That's all my work does. It uncovers your own strength, your own beauty. And once you find it, you run ahead with it and you build the life that you want and know that I'll always be there smiling and cheering you on and that it was always you. The way that I look at recovery is that every morning I try to get up and hit bullseye. And this is what I encourage my clients to do, right? Get up and try to hit bullseye. What is bullseye for me? That is a day when I take care of my body, when I take care of my spirit, and I take care of my emotional health. And when I hit bullseye on my recovery, it feels amazing. Everything is in the flow. I feel better. I'm vital. I'm present. There's so many gifts to hitting bullseye. And then some mornings I get up and I miss bullseye. And what's important to know is there's more learning and more richness when you miss bullseye. Because those are the days that you have to practice self-love and self-compassion. Because it's easy to love ourselves when we're hitting bullseye. There's no growth in that. There's not, I don't, I'm not even impressed with that when I love myself when I hit bullseye. It's when I miss, when I mess up when I make huge mistakes, but I still have the courage to go to the mirror, look myself in the eyes and say, I love you. I love you and it's okay. And it's going to be okay. That is where the growth is. We tend to be so hyper-focused on the perfection, the outcome, doing it really, really well. And then when that doesn't happen, we flip into the self-condemnation and the self-hatred and nothing will slow you down more than self-hatred. What are the things that you need to fill up your tank so that you go out in the world and it's overflowing and you're able to do the things that you love and enjoy and the work that is meaningful for you? So this is an important first step to find bullseye for you. My hope is that readers find a safe and inclusive space inside of my book. The main message is that there is absolutely nothing wrong with you, and there never was. You were born a perfect little being. You came into this world and then stuff happened to you. Sad stuff, scary stuff, traumatizing stuff. And you sought solace in food. And over time, that solace became an addiction, and today that addiction is unmanageable. So Never Enough is about the undoing 
undoing of the lies we've told ourselves, undoing the lies others have told us, and letting go of the never enough. Because you are still that perfect little being that came into this world, and you have a calm, confident, magnificent center. And your only job is to remember that and to connect to that. And that is what we're gonna do in this book. Through my many years and collaborations with the top obesity doctors and addiction doctors, I was able to get endorsements from people that I hold in great regard. Dr. Peter Selby has been a mentor and a coach to me and has taught me things about addiction and treatment that have been invaluable, that have been instilled throughout this book. Dr. Sandy Van and I have shared the stage across Canada and are aligned on so many values when treating people with elevated weights. And she is my bestie. I am so fortunate that not only do I get to work with the best, but they become my friends. And last but not least, Dr. Sean Wharton, who without his encouragement and support, there may have never been a program or a book because he was the first professional to ever take a chance on me and allow me to run my programs in his clinics. I will be forever grateful. If your relationship to food is affecting your health, your relationships, and even your career, then this book is for you. Never Enough is available everywhere books are sold online and in select bookstores. Or even if you know someone who's struggling with their weight and their eating, pick up a copy for them. Follow me on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, and I invite you to visit my website, sandralia.com, where you can join my community.